This is question number 38. So the first question, part A, says to fully factorize. Fully factorize 4x squared minus 6xy. Now, there are loads of ways of visualizing this, but one of the things that we talk about is 4x squared means 4xx. X. Take away 6xy, that's 6 x y okay, my writing is a bit scruffy there but fully factorize factorize means to put it into brackets so i'm going to plant a pair of brackets there i need to think about what number could go into four and six okay what's the biggest number that can go into four and six the biggest number that can go into four and six is a two what letters are common to both of these x's are common to both of these so i'll put two x outside now i need to think about what does 2x times by to give me 4x squared. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. There's a minus sign in the middle. 2x times what gives me 6xy. Now 2 times 3 is 6. There are no y's so far, right? So it's going to be 2x times 3y in there. 3y. Now just check it. Go through it. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. 2 times 3 is 6, x times y is xy, so I'll get the 6xy as well. Do watch out for this, right? So fully factorize means to factorize it completely. Yeah, letters and numbers that are common to both, and it's the biggest number that's common to both, or can go into both numbers as well. All right, let's look at part B. Factorize, I've got a quadratic here. It goes up to x squared. There are three terms in it, an x squared term, an x term, and a number term. So in my answer, I'll have two pairs of brackets. At the front of each of the brackets, I'll have x's because x times x gives me x squared. I now need pairs of numbers that times together to give me 6. So I could think of 1 and 6, 2 and 3. Okay, so 2 times 3 gives me 6, 1 times 6 gives me 6. I need to combine a pair of these to get a 5. Now it could be either of these at this stage because if you think about it, 1 and 6, I could do 6 take away 1 to get a 5, and 2 and 3, I could add them together to get a 5. All right, so that's why I've included this question here. It is a bit tricky. You might need to try different versions of it. I'm going to try the 1 and the 6 first. And the reason for that is because of this minus sign, I know I'm going to have to have a takeaway somewhere in here. I want to get plus. 5 in the center, so I might need plus 6 and minus 1. In fact, I will use the 6 and 1. It's going to be plus 6 and it's going to be negative 1. The reason why I can't use the 2 and the 3 is because to get a 5, they both need to be plus, and plus 2 times plus 3 is plus 6. I'm not going to get that minus 6 over here. Minus 1 times minus 6 is going to give me minus 6. Yep. So if I think about these here, when I times those two numbers, I'll get minus 6. If these were in there, plus 2 and plus 3, when I times them together, I'm not going to get minus 6. I'll get plus 6. Okay. Think about that. Make sure you do have a good handle on it and you are able to do, do it properly in an exam. Now, part C is a popular version of this question where they've given you the same quadratic, x squared plus 5x minus 6, but this time they've said it's equal to 0, right? The answer is very, very straightforward here. If they gave this to you on its own, you'd first factorize, right? You'd get the pairs of brackets. You'd do what we just did, right? You'd make it equal to 0 this time, and you have x plus 6. This is what you'd work out. And x minus 1. So, but we've done all of this already. Yeah, you've got the answer already. The answers are going to be x equals, right? And x equals. There are two answers. And it's the opposite sign to what we have in here. So over here, it's plus 6. So x equals minus 6. And x equals plus 1. Straightforward. Remember it. Make sure you can do it. And if you get something of this sort, you get it done and sorted in the exam. Go through this a couple of times. Make sure you're very, very familiar with it.